Good morning, church. It is a minute till nine on June 3rd in the year 2020. And we are going to be in Revelation chapter 6 for the Devo. There you go right there. And I title them now. This one's called Losing Your Security. Yikes, don't sound fun, does it? So if you're an insecure person, this might be a good one for you. And guess what? We all are insecure. Um, don't let anyone tell you different, by the way. Um, yeah, some people say, well, I'm more insecure. You know, I'm an insecure person. But you know what my answer is? I am too. Um, we all are insecure people. And uh, there's a remedy for that, though, in, in the Bible. And that is to die. And uh, and so there's two passages that I want to share with you before we hit Revelation 6. So good morning, everybody. Glad you guys are tuning in. Um, two passages that I'm going to go over. One of them just real quick, Matthew 16.25. Matthew 16.25 that says, For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Good passage, right? I need to lose my life, and if I lose my life, though, in G for Jesus' sake, in Jesus' name, for his sake, for his purpose, because I'm joining allegiance with him, I lose my allegiance to other things, then I truly will find it. Then I'll have eyes to see, right? But if I want the world then I'll have an alliance with that, and then I'll lose the sight um, of being aligned with Christ. So there's that passage. And then there's a, a really cool one, John chapter 12, 25. So we had Matthew 16, 25, John 12, 25. And this one says, For whoever loves his life will lose it. But whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Really cool passage. Whoever loves his life will lose it. Do you love your life that much? Then you're going to lose it. Your security is going to be taken away. Boom. Nah, man, that's tough for us to hear, right? And then it says, but whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. So there must be a necessary hating of my life in this world in order to be aligned with a reality world called eternal life that Jesus is telling us about. Well, this chapter in the book of Revelation is blowing up the, the life of security on this planet. So those passages will pertain to this chapter. Um, so whoever loves his life in this world is going to lose it. And here's where it gets into it. The four horsemen have been talked about forever. I love this passage, and I got to admit to you guys out there that Bo is a dude from Southern California that loved a lot of music and loved to be in the ocean and love people. And uh, there was a band from San Francisco that came out when I was young and in uh, junior high. And that band came out with a song called The Four Horsemen. And man, that song blew my mind and made me go, whoa, what's that about The Four Horsemen? And lo and behold, it led me into places of the these books, crazy books. One called Zechariah, where I saw in chapter 1 and chapter 6, horsemen, colored horsemen. And then it led me to a book called Revelation 2. Many movies on this subject, on the four horsemen, different kinds of movies, different books, different references, very famous. So John is now going to see something radical. He's going to see the seals that were on that scroll broken. And so the anticipation of this moment comes and it says, I watched as the lamb opened the first of the seven seals. 
right? Boom, one of them goes, oh man, what's going to happen? What What is going to go forth in the will of God, right? Then I heard one of the four living creatures, right? Remember their heads were different things, like the book of Daniel kind of thing, uh, you know? And it says, the four living creatures say in a loud voice like thunder, again, extreme loudness. Woo, all I could think of is like an arena where things are really loud, right? And I remember going to the tractor pools back at the Ventura County Fair, and man, those things blistered my ears like thunder. And what does it say? Come, okay? Action. Come on, John. Loud. Right, it's like a like a dad saying to a uh, uh, a kid who's come over here. You know, you almost get that idea. And it says, and I looked, and there before me was a white horse. Its rider held a bow, right, and he was given a crown, authority, right. So you think of bow, right, hunter, right. You think of crown very nimrod like right of the the very early stages of the book of um genesis where nimrod a mighty hunter you know a crown a ruler right and he rode out as a conqueror bent on conquest right so the first rider is white sounds all good but all of a sudden you got a bow and all of a sudden you got a crown and all of a sudden you got conquer quest take the world, take everything of it, strip it, take it. Um, you can see our security starting just to fall apart right as human beings here. Then the lamb opened the second seal. I like the sound effects. And I heard the second living creature say, come. Then another horse came out, a fiery red one. I like red. So I just can't imagine what that must have been like it was so cool to see right and its rider was given power to take peace from the earth and to make men slay each other to him was given a large sword all I can think about with a large sword and again this is Bo's background so you're gonna have to put up with it right is I remember going to watch uh, Dio in concert when I was in the seventh grade at the Forum, at the Fabulous Forum. And I remember when uh, Rodney James Dio came out, he was into dragons and swords and Knights of the Round Table and that kind of thing. But I remember he came out with this sword that was giganto. And, and so when I think of this, to him was given a large sword, I think of that kind of thing, just like a a sword of of action you know to pierce something you know to slay it and so this rider that was red was taking peace from the earth right the 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 security of the peace of the earth uh that's the seemingly peace that we have it was going away it was being stripped away right and so all these cool blessings that we see in the earth that are just slowly going away. The Bible would call these common graces, by the way, the common graces of God that are on the earth, right? They start going going away. And then it says, when the lamb opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, come and behold, there was before me a black horse. Its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand, right? Those scales. And then I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures saying, a quart of wheat for a day's wage, right? So then he hears a sound like a voice coming. It says among the four living creatures. So not sure, was it the four living creatures? I don't know. A quart of wheat for a day's wages and three quarts of barley for a day's wages and do not damage the oil and the wine. The, you get the idea that there is a a poverty here and then there's also the hoarding going on as well right security is being taken away and then all of a sudden you see these scales right economy right economic issues right all of a sudden you see certain things that seem common are now worth everything right and and they cost so much and then you see those things that were special items, oil and wine, 
right? That, that were common too, but definitely special items as well. Medicine, joyful occasions, celebrations. You see those kind of being hoarded. Don't damage the oil in the wine, right? Kind of that kind of, you know, hoarding of those things. So it's kind of interesting. You see that economic chaos, right? You see the 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 things of hoarding uh, those items, and you see the things of costs getting all out of whack, right? Things being limited, things not being available, all these things going on. Someone's day's wages, right, um, is 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 buying something that that wouldn't, you know, that is a normal item that shouldn't have cost that much but now it does cost a lot so again security right being taken away from us you know security going away stripping us then the lamb opened the fourth seal and i heard the fourth uh <clears throat> living creature say come and i looked and there before me was a pale horse and its rider was named Death and Hades. Hades, the place of the dead, Sheol in the Old Testament. That's the Hebrew word Sheol. Death was followed close behind him. And they were given power over a fourth of the earth. Now it says they were given power. It's kind of interesting that it says they were given power. I wonder if it's talking about all the other, this is the combination of the four. Right? They were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword, famine, and plague, and by the wild beasts of the earth. Some of this is like a reference into the book of Ezekiel, by the way. If you read some of the book of Ezekiel, you'll see the judgments of Israel in these kind of ways, where there would be famine, sword, plague, wild beast, these kind of ideas. You see in the book of Zechariah 1 and 6, which I already mentioned to you guys, that, that Zechariah 1 and 6 talks about these four horsemen or horsemen or chariots too that go out into the earth and they touch the four corners or they go out throughout the earth and they, and they, and they bring peace or they bring judgment, these kind of ideas. You get the idea that it's, it's the Lord's will that's being done, right? Horses obviously are very action oriented man they're crazy fast and swift and they bring things quickly right boom there it is you know a horse is kind of have that idea so you kind of get the idea that this is going to be a sweeping move you know over the earth a global issue that's going on right so very cool very interesting but notice our remember our passages matthew 16 25 and john 12 25 right you know, if you love your life in this world, you're going to lose it. But he who hates his life in this world will gain it to eternal life. The way you get security is by losing your life, your attachment, right? We've got to learn to detach. Lord, I'm already dead. I'm already seated in heavenly places. I'm already with you, Lord. Uh, the things I get to do here, I do in you and through you and you through me. And, and the things I get to touch, guitars, uh, whatever it is, recreational things, Lord, help me do them in you. Uh, let me not hold an attachment to these things. Lord, let me see that they only have worth and value in you because they will go. They will go. Everything will burn, right? Everything will go. You will die. And everything, either this is going to happen in our timeline, in our time, or, you know, or else we're going to go be with the Lord. But it's we're going to be stripped. So, the Bible saying, hey, when you give your life to Christ, you are in Christ now. You are with Christ. You're seated in heavenly places. Your life is with Christ. It's not here anymore. The life that you live now, you live to please God, to serve God, right? To be a steward, right? So when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain. Wow. The souls of those who had been slain. How do you see a soul? <laughs> that's that's my question to John when I get to heaven. I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain. Man, what did that look like? You know, that's a, that's I can't even figure that out. It says because of the word of God and the testimony they had maintained. Notice they maintain. Lord, help me to maintain testimony today. 
They called out in a loud voice, How long, sovereign Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood? They say this to God, right? It's very King David-like, right? In the, in the Psalms, what's called the precatory Psalms. <clears throat> Read Psalm 103 if you want <clears throat> and get a chance. Hold on. <clears throat> and you'll get an idea of that. Sorry about that. Every now and then the allergies get going. So, uh, and they were told to wait a little longer, right? Each of them was given a white robe. White's the idea of what? Purity, right? White robe. They were cleansed. They were told to wait a little longer until the number of their fellow servants and brothers who were to be killed as they had been was completed. Wow. Okay. So there's this idea of nothing's wrong with us crying out to God and saying, man, something's wrong. Something's crazy. You know, things aren't right. Even when people are trying to do the right thing and trying to get justice, we hurt people. It's super crazy, right? How it works. It's like, man, we try to do justice and what we do is we inflict harm while getting the justice that we desire. And it seems like there's something just in us that seems to always go off, right? We have to learn to detach and know we live for another, right? We live in another kingdom. I watched as he opened the sixth seal, and there was a great earthquake. The sun turned black, the sackcloth made of goat hair, and the whole moon turned blood red, and the stars in the sky fell to the earth as late fig drops from a fig tree were shaken by a strong wind. The sky receded like a scroll, rolling up, and every mountain in its uh, and island was removed from its place. So we see catastrophe, right, with the sixth seal right opening. I forgot about that. Now I've been in a big earthquake and I remember 16 people died behind Syl Sylvia and me in the Meadows apartments uh, off of Reseda Boulevard. And, um, uh, and, uh, yeah, that area. And, uh, we, uh, when we were in that big earthquake, just r how radical that thing was. So here we see, even there's times that we go through in this life where all of our all of our security in the foundation of what we see as normal, the floor, right? The sky, the wind, all of a sudden it decides to get cha chaotic. And any of us who have been in a catastrophe... Um, and and you know you know what it's like and just how super out of control it is when these things strike and there's nothing you can do you always hope to prepare but when something hits that fast there's not there's nothing you could do when this earthquake hit us there's nothing we could do we were on the epicenter there's no nothing you could do. It just goes and the floor gives out and you no longer feel your weight of your body because all of a sudden there's no floor. And um, it's super bizarre. It's absolutely unreal, the adrenaline level. Um, and your brain just goes like a pinball machine that gets tilted and it just stops working. So burp, that's the end. And then the ball just goes you know, back in the, the cradle because you ain't working no more. And that's how your brain does. Your brain just goes, it just knocks off, goes into shock. And that's what's going on here. Everything of security is is going to go away. Everything that you hold dear is is no longer going to be there. You know, you trust in the things of this world and that's all you got. And that 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 seems so shallow. That's all you got is this. And that's why it was awesome when the Smiths back in the 80s wrote a song and it said, and, and Morsi, the singer, said, there is a better world at the very end. And then he said, there must be. And then he goes, oh, there must be. And he keeps saying that line, there must be. There, yeah, that's right. We need to align with something greater, you know, and Jesus is that better, he says. And that greater, and he's got another kingdom for us. Then the kings of the earth, verse 15, the princes and the generals and the rich and the mighty men and every slave and every free man hid in caves and among the rocks and the mountains. So now there is no partiality on the planet anymore. When these things strike and the security is gone, whether you're rich, whether you're not rich, whether you're poor, they all call for the mountains and the rocks to fall on them. 
and they hide from the face of the person who sits on the throne, right? They want to hide from God, it says, and from the wrath of the Lamb, right? What is the seal's opening? It's opening up of a revelation of the justice of God, and it's seen in as the wrath of the Lamb. Wow. The, you don't think of a lamb as a wrathful animal. But you can see the incredible imagery here of a slain lamb, but yet has seven horns, all powerful, that now seeks a justice for the injustice that has taken place. And if we don't see our own injustice, our own personal injustice that we commit, then we are certainly to commit injustice amongst man, mankind. That's what we'll do. And so for the great day of their wrath has come and who can stand? Nobody. Gone. It could be scary. It's scary when you're when everything's on the earth, when everything all you want is what's here. And we have to learn to detach from that. And that's what I think this morning in this Devo is Lord help me to live that Colossians three life today. Let my heart and my mind be set in heaven where you are, Jesus, at the right hand of the Father. Whew, that's a good one. A lot of good stuff here, man. Hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, have a great day, okay? Uh, We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.